Hello there, magical travelers. Are you ready for adventure? Well, at D23, Disney announced a lot of changes coming to the resort and the transportation side of Walt Disney World. And I love looking at the logistics and kind of the transport management system of Walt Disney World. So I thought I'd have a bit of a chat with you guys about the changes that are coming and how I think that affects the bigger picture of Walt Disney World. So obviously at D23, Disney announced a few details about what's going to be coming to Walt Disney World as a whole. Taking away the parks, we're talking more transportation and hotels. So the big announcement that came out from D23 was the fact that the Star Wars Hotel is going to get built. Now, I talked about this briefly in my Hollywood Studios video, which I'll link here. However, what's unique about this hotel is it's going to be its own experience. It's not going to be a hotel where you can just stay in and it's kind of a bespoke bubble by itself and you can kind of stay and do the resort type things. This is actually going to be a hotel that is adjoined to a park directly. And I don't mean like on the monorail loop, I mean in a case of you can go straight from that hotel into the park and back and forth. You'll have your own exclusive entrance. Now the way this hotel is going to work is you pay for a fixed experience, be it a two or three night. They haven't really announced what the package will be. But similar to how a Disney Cruise works, whereby you pay a fee up front and once you've paid that fee, that's it. You go on board and you have this adventure, you have this experience and things are included. The Star Wars Hotel is going to have that very similar mentality of once you pay your fee to go in, you're on this adventure and everything you do as part of that Star Wars adventure is kind of included. That will also include entry into Star Wars Land, Galaxy's Edge in Hollywood Studios. This is unlike anything I think I've seen anyone ever do anywhere else, especially Disney do. The fact as well that this will be a narrative-led hotel experience is quite interesting and quite unique. Now, you'll be able to check into this hotel, be given a character to play, and then experience the hotel and Star Wars Galaxy's Edge differently depending on which character you've been assigned and which adventure you're given. This will obviously give repeat value to the park, but it'll also allow for individual storytelling, which is something Disney are really big on. Every single person will experience a different adventure. Now, this is obviously really easily achievable with the Magic Band technology. By having that band on and by having kind of the trackability, they can track what you've done, where you've done and how you've done it. And this is kind of an evolution of that technology. Now, I think this technology and this experience will trickle out to the rest of the resort in minor cases, but it's very clear that Disney want a premium cost this. They want to charge people a premium to get an experience that they can't get generally everywhere else. But, Unlike when they just sell cabanas in Tomorrowland, I actually think this is a great way to do it because you are getting a good value for money proposition. You're staying in a unique hotel that only guests like yourself get to stay in and you get exclusive access to a brand new land or a land that is tied to that hotel. Now, I can see them maybe dabbling in this in other parks as well. If you think in Adventureland, they could possibly do either a pirates themed hotel or a Moana themed hotel and have a storyline that you can take on an adventure between those two different lands. There are obviously lots of possibilities for them to ramp this up if it is successful. However, I am super excited for this and I will be staying there once I can afford it because I'm sure it's not going to be cheap. So for all you Disney Vacation Club fans out there and members, Disney did announce the new Riviera Resort. Now, I'm not a Vacation Club member myself so I don't really fully get the whole way the system works but I believe a lot of people were shocked that this was announced before they'd actually sold the current new lot of Vacation Club resorts that are coming online. Now it looks like this resort is gonna be adjacent to the Caribbean Beach Resort, and this I think is part of an ongoing trend that we're seeing in Walt Disney World, where they're kind of restructuring how the resorts are branded and bracketed. In the past, they've had really clear definitions of value, moderate, and deluxe. However, with the Vacation Club, and also with kind of the changing of the markets, these bands have kind of gone from being really easily defined brackets to more of a sliding scale and I think we're going to see more of a trend from Disney where they're going to be changing the perception of what a value resort is and what a moderate resort is and I wouldn't be surprised if we see those terms disappear entirely from future marketing because I'm pretty sure that those of you who do stay in deluxe resorts know that there is a scale of deluxe resorts. Not all deluxe resorts are created equally. Some are better or some offer things differently to other resorts. For example, if you look at the Animal Kingdom Lodge, it's a very expensive resort to stay in because of its unique offering. And I think Disney are gonna be moving towards that system whereby they look at unique offerings rather than this is a deluxe resort, so if you stay here, you're getting a deluxe experience. Now, this is never more true than when you look at the moderate category of resort. There's quite a difference between kind of all the different type of moderate resorts and what they offer and what the pros and cons for them are. 
And I think Disney, again, are going to be trying to move away from purely saying, if you stay here, you're a moderate guest. I think they're going to move into a system whereby, if you stay here, you're a Caribbean beach resort type of guest, rather than you're a moderate guest. I know Disney have problems with the value resorts as well, particularly the perceptions some people have where they say, oh, well, it's just a value resort, so they'll treat her a particular way. Even if you look in the value category and kind of consider Art of Animation and compare to the all-star resorts, there's a great big difference between those resorts, yet they're supposed to be in that rough value bracket. So again, I think Disney are going to be moving away from purely defining resorts as value, moderate and deluxe. The other thing that's going to make a big impact to this perception of price point is going to be the new gondola system they announced, the Disney Skyliner, which looks great and I'm all for it, particularly the fact that it'll allow easy, quick and convenient transportation from Epcot to Hollywood Studios. Now for a long time there's been thousands of rumours about the fact that the monorail system is going to get expanded. What a lot of people have pointed out very clearly is a highly inefficient cost-wise way of adding transportation to Walt Disney World. And I also know that Disney are going to want to make sure that people can get back and forth Hollywood Studios really easily once Star Wars Land happens. Because once that land opens, it's going to get inundated with guests trying to get there. So while a monorail system is really efficient in regards to moving lots of people frequently, it isn't very efficient from a costing point of view. Building a monorail system is very expensive. So Disney have been really hesitant to add the other two resorts, Hollywood Studios and Animal Kingdom, onto a monorail system. So the Gonzalo system looks like it could be a unique and special way of adding extra transportation options to the resort as a whole. The other side of this as well, by adding the Gondola system to the Caribbean Beach Resort, the new Riviera Resort, and the Pop Century slash Art of Animation Resort, it allows Disney to reposition those resorts into a different category. You know, Pop Century will no longer be purely a value resort because it has access to the Gondola system. That puts it up a bracket, which again alludes to this fact that I mentioned about the fact that it looks like Disney are going to be looking to kind of change the perception of what a value moderate and deluxe resort is. Obviously now the Caribbean Beach Resort was always historically a moderate resort and in some people's perception it was at the bottom of the scale in a moderate resort. Having the gondola system now will equally push it up a tier. So there's a lot of this type of shuffling happening in Walt Disney World whereby they're looking at how they can add value and add experience onto pre-existing resorts and pre-existing destinations. Now with regards to Animal Kingdom, unfortunately it is a great distance away from Hollywood Studios. So I don't think it will be easy for Disney to add it onto the gondola system. While it's possible that Disney could use Blizzard Beach as an excuse to expand the gondola system over to Animal Kingdom, it is quite a wide distance with very few resorts. Now, if they were possibly to build a resort between the two, then they could use that as, a, as an excuse to kind of add on a stop that stops off of those resorts. But I think unfortunately for the foreseeable future, I don't think Animal Kingdom is going to be added onto a monorail slash gondola system anytime soon. The other thing they announced, and what I think is really cute, is the minivan system. Now, Disney has seen an upgrowing trend with regards to guests booking Ubers to get back and forth resorts and back and forth parks. And the one thing you could be sure about Disney is if they see somebody else making money off their resort, they will do their damnedest to stop it. So by introducing their own brand Uber-like system, they're ensuring that guests are using their system over using the Uber system. Now, I don't really know much about how you book a minivan, however, they have started cropping up on the resorts already. But pretty much this is just the official Disney taxi service for what Disney World Resort. And this just goes to show that Disney are willing to change and evolve their business model depending on what their guests are doing. Now, I think this is the start of things to come with regards to the change to the resort and how it works from a transportation point of view, but also from a resort point of view. As I mentioned, I really do believe that Disney are going to look at reshuffling the, the landscape of what resorts are value or deluxe and moderate. And I also think resorts that were previously moderate could potentially become a low deluxe resort. So guys, please do chime in in the comments below and let me know your thoughts on all this. I'm really excited for the gondola system. Are you? Do you think it's going to have a big impact on Hollywood Studios and getting more people into Hollywood Studios on a daily basis? Are you also really excited for the Star Wars Hotel when that opens and will you be saving up to go there when it opens? Also, if you're a Vacation Club member, are you excited for the Riviera Resort to be opening as well? And if you've taken a minivan, can you please let me know how you book one? So that's it for today, guys. If you've liked this video, please give it a great big thumbs up. It lets other people know you've enjoyed it. And if you want to know more of my opinions and thoughts and news on what Disney World and the Disney Company as a whole, please do hit that subscribe button because you'll be the first to find out. So that's a wrap for today, Magical Travellers. I've been Kieran, and I'll see you real soon.